Welcome back to Philippines Uncut. I'm Buddy Kunana. Tonight's topic is the GMO controversy. And still with us are Hans Palacios, a natural health advocate, and Ms. Gigi Padilla Chua, president of the Consumer Rights for Safe Food. Welcome back uh, to our second segment. And uh, let's kick this off by talking about what Hans mentioned in the first segment. You mentioned um, this big company. Or I think Gigi mentioned this big company, and then you, you said something about them being and the work they do with farmers. And this company is Monsanto. Monsanto yes. Tell us what, more about this. Well, Monsanto is uh, the number one. As you said, they yep. used to be a chemical company. Now they're the number one seed provider uh, for GMOs in the world. Now, uh, to show you how tightly run this industry is, uh, when, you, when you have a contract with them, it's very hard to get out of that contract. You're tied with them. Let's say well, you. Who is you? Let's say you're, a far you're, farmer. you're the you're farmer. You're a farmer. You want to produce right. corn, let's okay. say, in the Midwest, in the okay. United States. Or let's States. say here, in, in the Philippines. Yeah. Okay. So they provide you the seeds. They provide you the, uh, the technology, the pesticides, and all that. That alone already is going to uh, produce a long-term relationship with them. However, you're not allowed to get seeds from anyone but them. Because they're the only source. You're not, you won't be able to plant in the ground anymore because they just poisoned your ground with, with the Roundup, the herbicides, and the pesticides. And wow. let's say you have a neighbor, and your neighbor is planting organic corn, and for some reason the wind blows, and then you, <coughs> it cross-fertilizes, and all of a sudden the genes which they have a patent on for this corn goes to the other side. This is happening in the United States. All of a sudden, the neighbor who is planting organic has corn, which is of the same gene. They get sued. They get yes, sued yes, for yes, doing nothing yes, yes. but being there. Yes. Because now, these guys have the same type of corn or similar corn because of the cross-pollination. Yes, to the Monsanto. To the, the patented uh, yes. yeah, genes. Yes. So, that's how tight this, this thing is uh, being run. And the farmer, let's say next year, is I'm tired of this Monsanto business. I want to go back and just plant ordinary corn. He can't because you said that the land is now tainted yes. or, or not, uh, it's been treated. Let's put it that way. Now, uh, in the process, uh, in the long term, farms in the United States, because of all the, of the spraying and killing of herbs, they, they, they now began to grow sup super weeds. These are weeds that are resistant to any type of toxic uh, weed killers. And then this alone is already a scary phenomenon that, that's happening in the farms across the United States. In Argentina, uh, which is a big problem, in India, which is also having problems, and China, I heard, is, is already uh, ringing the alarm bells with what's going on well, right I'm now. I'm sure Monsanto is developing or has developed some sort of cure for that as well. So you well, need to buy something from Monsanto to kill the No, no, weeds. that's it. That's it. <laughs> in fact, uh, the scientists were saying that uh, the, re the effects of uh, global warming would have normalized, but the effects of this spraying, the poisoning of the land, would still be there. It's a longer recovery from, uh, from the effects of global warming. It's really detrimental to the environment, not just to the health, but even, as you mentioned yes. earlier, to the environment. Now, okay, we've been talking about, for the past 30, 35 minutes, we've been talking about GMOs, we've been throwing a lot of words out there, uh, genetic engineering, uh, biotechnology, etc., etc. Let's bring it down to the level of the consumer. Okay. Yeah. Now, Gigi, when one walks into a supermarket these yes. days, how, how prevalent or how, what is the GMO experience in the supermarket, a typical supermarket? Here uh, in the Philippines, let's yes. talk about local, local uh, situation. In terms of crops, mm. uh, there are no GMOs yet being sold for people to eat okay. in our supermarket. Um, so no vegetables, nothing like that, no, no not GMO yet. crops. Okay. If we not can yet. help it, but... Um, GM eggplant is now being field tested, soon to be commercialized if it passes the field testing. So is GM rice. Wow. Do you have an, uh, some idea about what kind of eggplant these, uh, eggplants these are, what kind of rice? Uh, the this eggplant is? is supposed to have a poison against the, uh, the borer. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that nuisance yes. tool, the, the worm that yes. when you open an eggplant sometimes and there's yeah. a, like a larva inside, that, that's yes. what you're talking about. Okay. And the rice, they are supposed to have, um, they are supposed to be vitamin enriched, vitamin A enriched. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. they're yeah. saying, oh, this is really a good thing for humanity because 
our children just eating the rice will not have uh, vitamin A deficiency. And you know me, you know, I like to cook and sometimes I have to tell you when I open up egg plant, those little bastards there, you know, <laughs> pain, the, pain in the neck. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but this is the surface level only. <laughs> but you're saying now that these, kind of, these kinds of egg plant, yes. egg plants and rice are now being or will be field tested in the Philippines. Are being are field, being field tested, tested in the yes. Philippines. Okay. And for a cook like you, yeah. uh, when you open a, an egg plant or a, any and you see all these things, I think it's now a good sign, no? Because now we say, you buy the bulok, yeah. because it means yeah. no pesticide, no, it's more organic. Interesting, interesting. And yeah. the other thing is, uh, when uh, GM eggplant comes to the Philippines, you can be sure it will wipe out all the other varieties of indigenous eggplants we have. We have a lot. Mm -hmm. We have small, big, sure. uh, different yeah. tastes, and that is why in India, Aside from the health reason, they also were very careful. They didn't want the GM eggplant uh, to be commercialized mm -hmm. because they are so, um, uh, uh, eggplant is like a state, yeah, staple course, in course. India. Yes. So they were afraid also for their many indigenous uh, eggplant varieties. Now for GMO rice and GMO eggplant, um, do you know how far the testing has gone and, how, and let's say approximately are they, are they close to finish? Um, testing? Is it close I, I the market? The GM rice is just beginning. Okay. But again, this is all secret. I think Greenpeace tried to know where are these test sites because part of the, you have to know and you have to inform the community that, yeah. hey, we're testing this yeah, rice yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were able to get some documents, but the location was crossed out. Mm, Can you mm, believe that? That's mm. a document from the government. Yes. Uh, the corn, I mean the eggplant, was already tested in, I think, nine areas. Um, it was stopped because of what they have in the Supreme Court now. But um, I'm sure they want to continue yes. it. Aside from the eggplant and the rice, are there other crops <coughs> currently being tested? Yes. Um, not that I know of, although corn <coughs> okay. is already <coughs> in the Philippines. A lot of... <coughs> Um, different kinds of GM corn are already planted, commercialized wow. in the Philippines. But these are for animals, supposedly, feeds. for oh. animal feeds. Now, okay, I like to buy corn, and like when I go to the supermarket or the public market, and no, I see corn they're, there, they're I don't GM. see any differentiation. Okay, these are the GM corn for animals. This is this is the GM corn for humans. Hopefully not. I mean, you know, they, it's not supposed to be for human consumption yet. But but who's to stop them from selling it to human? I mean. What kind of control that's, do you have? I yeah, that's I, why. That's another reason that uh, we're up in arms about it. I mean, there, there's a lot of concern. Is because there are still no controls. We have to, to be able to stand back first and set the ground rules for the, all of this happening. We don't want to wake up one day and find ourselves in an arable land where, which, where only GMO grows, where we are facing the problems of the side effects of what our kids have eaten. Remember, even this... Uh, this uh, corn that they, they feed to the poultry, to the, the pigs, yeah. to the chicken. Yeah. The chicken eats it, the, 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 the pigs eat it, and then who eats the pig? Who eats the chicken? There we go. So uh, going back to the supermarket scenario, so when you stroll down the aisle, you pass the frozen, the, the, the vegetable yeah. area section, you go to the fresh goods, uh, you yes. know. And, okay, um, well, what about what Hans okay. said, the chicken and the yeah. pork you buy? Um, sadly, I would say that we all have eaten GMOs. Uh, wow. In Canada, they tested the blood of uh, women there, and they saw the, uh, um, the proteins of GM products in the blood of the Canadian women. So I'm sure all of us have eaten. But let's say in the supermarket, so, is chicken yeah. still safe to eat? Is pork still safe um, to eat? Did you buy there? How, if, how, I mean, how you prevalent are, this is? If you are really... Uh, strictly want to cut out GMOs, then you have to buy organic, free-range chickens and pork. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Again, you just have to be really careful. Yeah, you, you have to um, be careful about what you choose. Yeah. And uh, As far as the poultry is concerned, I mean, apart from the way that they grow, the, they grow them now in 28 days, the commercial chicken, to keep the price down to 130 pesos per kilo. Wow. They, they have, they're heavy on the hormones. Mm. They're heavy on the antibiotics. Do you know that 
80% of the world antibiotics is consumed by animals. Wow, no, I didn't know that. Prescription antibiotics, no. uh, uh, 20% goes out medically, I mean prescriptions and all that. For people. Eight, for sure. people, and 80%. Yeah. You know, you need the prescription to get antibiotics. Yes, yes. But they give it out freely to the animals. I mean, every animal in the farms is given a shot of, uh, of antibiotics. It's 80%. So what you're saying is that unless the chicken or the pig is raised by mang isko yes. in its farm being fed, you know, like uh, free range, canning baboy, whatever. Yes. Unless it's that, and you go to the supermarket now, chances are the pork, the beef, the chicken that you have bought there is has been fed GMO yes. corn. Yes. GMO fed, wow. hormone injected, wow. antibiotic fed, and everything is there. I'm getting depressed, Hans. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's the reason we're here. We, we, we want to help those guys who are raising hell right now and back up to say, we, we know, we're, we're here, we're backing you up. As a parent, and you're a parent, I know, and you're a parent as well, yeah. would you feed your kids ch chicken that you buy in supermarkets or pork that you buy in supermarkets? Do you feed your kids this? Um, knowing, knowing, knowing that these are fed by GMO with GMO yeah. corn? Unfortunately, it's really hard to get organic food right yeah, now, no? It's expensive. It's kind of expensive. Yeah. So, yes, I do. Yeah. Which is very sad. And, mm. uh, you know, stopping to eat GMOs is not something you decide today and tomorrow, that's it. Mm. Uh, it's a process. You, you learn about it, you find sources. Mm. Uh, I'm learning more and more where to get this and that. So, more and more we're changing. Uh, the places where we buy food. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Hans? What do you recommend for people to to want to avoid eating GMO food? Well, I, I, I to me, this is a uh, there's opportunity here. We we have these dangers, and there's solutions that uh, we can find. Like we can have local, you know, the go to your local farms, your uh, source them locally, so that this now allows the the industry to grow locally. So you, you, have, you have your farmer's markets, you encourage that, let people grow organically, encourage also free-range farming. It, it may be a bit more expensive, but if they see there is a demand for it, that, the prices will go down. And then probably uh, people will appreciate food more also, because like here in the Philippines, if you look at Europe, let's say even in places like France, their portions are a lot less than ours. They, they, they really choose the food that they, they, they sure, don't sure. binge out, you know, uh, every time, you know, two cups of rice and all that. People have to be more careful about how they eat and what they eat. So maybe this will be a lesson for us. And then community-wise, you're able to encourage uh, local farming. Every province will have its vegetables, its livestock, its chicken and all that. So you have industries growing and opportunities for people now to get into business also and and do something productive for yes, us. Yes. Who knows, maybe in the future we might be able to export this also because this will be in big demand. I'm telling you, yes. uh, once yes. this gets out of hand, people will be looking for non-GMO products. And hopefully, just hopefully, we'll be one of those countries that can produce that. Yes. Okay, let's talk about yeah. government initiatives. Are you aware of any, uh, Gigi, any government initiatives in this direction? Uh, I mean, how is the government response? What is the government's uh, response? Is it favorable? Are they leaning towards GMOs? Are they... You're uh, somehow being a little bit more, uh, you know, careful. Yeah, the government is, is actually a bit schizophrenic about this <laughs> okay. because they, we just passed the Organic Agriculture Act, mm -hmm. which means that the government should uh, encourage organic agriculture, and they see this as a very big industry in the future. But at the same time, they are encouraging all of this. I mean, not encouraging, maybe, but not regulating uh, the GMOs that are coming in. And these two kinds of crops cannot be side by side. They cannot coexist. Mm. They cannot mm. coexist, mm. yeah. Yes. There are uh, a number of labeling laws now in Congress. Um, we are lobbying as consumer rights for Very good. food. And um, the last time it, it already passed the subcommittee and so we're waiting for it to go to the committee. <laughs> what kind of labeling would you wish to see on products? Like no well, GMO, in, say, no, no GMOs. So uh, well, uh, we really want no GMOs to be sold, but yeah. it seems impossible. So we, we want it to be labeled whether this contains uh, GMO products, ingredients, 
or whatever GMO mm -hmm. or GMO process is. Yes, yeah. So that the consumer can choose. Because they, the, they're always saying there's nothing wrong with GMOs. But if you ask uh, these big companies, they are also lobbying not to label their yes, product. Of this is against. This would be against their interest. No, I but mean, if they're so proud, like they say, you know, the rice is vitamin A. If I were them, and this is a good thing, I would label it so that people yeah. would buy it because it's so good for you. Yeah. But yeah. yet they're fighting the labeling. Well, well uh, there you go. As more of this kind of, you know, as, as the truth gets out there and people yes, are that's, more that's aware, what, that's, that's what they fear. Actually. Yes, yes. That's what they fear. I mean. Uh, the awareness about GMOs is worldwide already, uh, more, more in the, the first world countries. So if, if uh, they label, people are aware that they, this is something they shouldn't, be, they, they shouldn't be touching. So there is also lobbying to keep that labeling away. Absolutely. And I have to say, Gigi, uh, being very frank, this is really an uphill battle they're, yes. they're fighting because yes. it took years and years for even, let's say, in cigarettes. For that yes. warning we placed there in America, it took yeah. years. It took massive amounts of uh, the public was really enraged. It came to a point where the, the public was really mobilized mm -hmm. as to the health risk posed by cigarettes. I mean, this thing for this thing to happen in the Philippines and against a powerful lobby like I'll say it, Monsanto, yes. a <laughs> powerful lobby like them. I mean, you guys are really going to need a lot of help. Yeah. Um, Hans, uh, before you go, before we go, would you like to say something to the audience? Yeah, I mean, uh, people, this is the, the uh, we have the opportunity to learn uh, what is what is in front of us and uh, we have uh, an opportunity to control what is uh, being passed before us so what we should do is to get some of our own representatives there we, we, we need politicians on our side so we have to lobby to them we have to be able to get our congressmen our senators to be able to take up this mission to make sure that whatever is put between before us is safe and uh, I'm telling you the standards or, or, of research that have to be done are a lot. It's not something that you can, you can do overnight. I mean, even the pharmaceutical companies, when their medicines get pulled out, it's only after two years after a lot of people have been yes, victimized. Yes. See, when, 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 we, when we the people are the guinea pigs, yeah. let's not allow ourselves to be made guinea pigs. This. this is an important issue for us. It affects a lot of people. It affects our children. It affects us. And... We have so many other things to be concerned about, and this is one major one. It's our food that's uh, at stake, and it's our land. It's, it's children's future. It's, it's, the, it's the ecology of our land that's involved as well. Yes. So that's it. Yes. Gigi, how about you? Yeah. Um, we believe in our group that the power really is in the consumers. We may lobby in Congress. It will take years uh, before that law is actually passed. But with consumers, that's what we're doing, educating people. The moment consumers stop buying GMOs, it will be off the shelves. Yes. Anyway, you know, um, we like to keep everything's balanced here in Philippines and Cut. If uh, people from Monsanto are watching and they would like to give their response and come out with you on the show, are you are yes. you are you Definitely. willing to come out here yes. and and talk and chew the fat, so to speak, <laughs> with Definitely. Monsanto? Yes. That makes sense. So I'll, I, well, that's a show I'm going to look forward to doing. <laughs> All right. So, guys, thank you for coming to the show, and I hope that our, I'm sure our viewers are more enlightened now as to the realities of GMOs here in the Philippines and, you know, as a topic, and we will definitely cover this issue in the days and weeks to come. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you. the opportunity. Thank so, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show on GMOs and are more enlightened now on the issues. Uh, join us again next week here in Philippines Uncut, where we talk about the issues that matter to you because you matter the most. See you next week. <laughs>